Praise God. Good evening. God bless you. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for Friday night, Friday night live, y'all. Here we are again. This is another glorious day, all day today, and I bid you a good evening as the sun sets all across of this great land and country. Now on the West Coast and those of you on the East Coast, it may be a little dark already, but can I tell you the sun will come out tomorrow. I know it will with the help of God. And we pray that no matter how dark the night gets, we know weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We're gonna keep moving because I got a special treat. Uh, amen and I am so grateful to God for our Chief of Staff, uh, Reverend Gerald Bailey. And tonight we're going to be blessed with a word from the Lord. Uh, amen. A message. And I am grateful for all of you who are with us uh, today. Today. Yes, I see you. Thank God for all of you. Amen. Being on it, Irma. Thank you, Corletha. Mary. God bless you. Mary and Al. Robin. Hey, you are so faithful. God bless you, Robin uh, Spencer. And Sister uh, Nisi. God bless you. All the way from Victorville. I Reach you in the name of Jesus. I was dead and praying for dead and that God continue to strengthen him every day that he'll get better and better. Arlena Brazier and uh, Ellis Brazier, God bless you. Nichelle, God bless you. Thank you, Nichelle. Thank you for being on uh, uh, Diane Anthony until die. And praise God for her and for all of you and so many others that are joining us by way of uh, YouTube and by the way of Instagram, or however you're connected with us today. We're just giving God praise. There's so much to give God thanks for. And I thank him, most importantly, I thank him for you. I thank him for you. You could have been doing other things at night, but you're here with us. And so we don't want to waste any of the time. We want to get right to it because we put in praise in the atmosphere and prayer in the air. Our scripture our, our devotional scripture for tonight, uh, as we go for all this weekend, starting tonight and then tomorrow, uh, I'll be blessed, uh, be blessing, uh, speaking to a number of different uh, uh, group of, of religious, uh, or excuse me, uh, uh, Christian denominations of different races. It's not ecumenical because they are believers, but they're believers from different races on tomorrow and amen on Sunday. And we want to remind everybody because God gave us a commandment. He says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And this is what it's about. And we've been trying to share with you, been trying to tell it to you. And maybe the Holy Spirit is going to open it up better now that God is calling Grace Temple and Israel Missionary Baptist Church. He's called us. He's anointed us to touch the world. There is world evangelism. That's what this weekend is world evangelism. We want to be reminded of our assignment to go into all the world and preach the gospel. We thank God that we start first at home. You start in your house and then you start in your neighborhood, your church, your community. Amen. And then we move out. You know, we start in Jerusalem and Judea and then Samaria. Then he says in the uttermost parts of the world. So wherever your Jerusalem, Samaria, wherever your uttermost parts of the world is, as the body of Christ, I was just excited. I heard, uh, matter of fact, a member, a prayer warrior, Derek Lashley, amen. The bishop gave him an assignment. We were talking about it uh, the other day about evangelism. Hey, hey, Derek Lashley, Derek Lashley is on with us. Amen. Do his work. Hallelujah. And then, uh, amen, another, it was at one of our other meetings, I think a leadership meeting. I think it was Sister Amy, she talked again about evangelism. I said, that's confirmation. The Holy Spirit is telling us. And it was this week. We had already made plans for this week being World Evangelism Week. And I thank God because we need your help. We need your help to reach the world because that's what Jesus said in Matthew 24. Uh, he says that he's coming back. As a matter of fact, man, uh, he's coming back for a church without spot or a wrinkle. But then also all the world has to hear the gospel before he returns. He wants us to get the gospel out even before the rapture returns. Everybody got to hear it, regardless of what color, regardless of what language. And I'm glad that God is using us and God is calling us in 2021. He got a plan for Israel and a plan for grace, a plan for us together. And thank God for those of our family and our members. Thank you all for being a part of this wonderful work of God. And this is a good place to plant your seeds, a good place, uh, amen, to plant your membership. The amen, either congregation is a good place because we're coming back, y'all, to church. We are already in worship, uh, amen, in worship every Sunday, every Sunday, 845 at Grace Temple. 
And then at 11.30, worship begins uh, promptly uh, at 11.30 at Israel Baptist Church. And right in the middle at 10 o'clock, at 10 o'clock or at the end of the, uh, for uh, the stream, the Sunday school lesson will be streamed every Sunday morning. So at 10 o'clock, it's our prayer to have the Sunday school lesson rolling. Amen. And then we will have our stream. We won't be streaming live in worship. We'll just be recording. So the sermon and the Bible school, Sunday school lesson, all of them should never be interrupted. We never should be late starting them. We planned it, y'all. Even last week was the, the maneuvering into being a week ahead. Uh, so we thank you for your patience last Sunday with Sunday school, but we intend for Sunday to school to start at 10 o'clock every Sunday morning and morning worship at 1130. So y'all be with us this Sunday uh, as we do that. This, I got some more announcements. Let's get to our devotional reading. Matthew chapter 28. I did tell y'all this is a world evangelism weekend for us, for us, uh, Grace and Israel. This is for us, our world evangelism emphasis weekend. And the scripture, Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28 and beginning at verse, at verse 16. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. <coughs> Excuse me. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus spake unto them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Amen. We call that the Great Commission. The great, great commission. And I want to share with you, you know, you're always right on track, no matter what other people, when you're doing what the word of God says, and that's our desire, that's our prayer. And I pray that you would walk with us. Amen. And that you would uh, be a part of our, our journey, visual and grace. Uh, amen. And all of our sister churches, as we evangelize the world, we lead the world to Jesus Christ. And so thank you so very much. Even those uh, for a good evening, Brenda Morris. Good evening to you. Amen. And we thank God for your presence. Uh, amen. And for being on because we know that there's no greater work than serving God. Matter of fact, there's no greater payoff. Amen. Yes, the, the work may get rough. The road gets rough and the road gets tough and the hills sometimes are hard to climb. But can I tell you, you can't beat the payday. You can't beat the benefits of serving the Lord. And let me tell you, serving the Lord will pay off. You may not see it right now, y'all, but if you just be obedient to God's will and his word, not do what you want, but do what God wants. Amen. Do what, do what the God is, is shown and what God is leading. And you say, I don't know what God wants. Well, God has leaders. God has people whom he has given vision and direction to lead you. Just allow God to lead you and watch what God does. I'm telling you, I t with all my heart, I know God is in control and God has a plan for our ministry. Amen. We are a unified fellowship. Amen. Faithfully focused on doing God's will. But you can't do God's will if you don't know God's will. And But we know this. We know his will is that he would use us to evangelize. We know that's his will. The whole world. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. God bless you. We thank God for that. So we're going to continue. And through this wonderful device of uh, internet, through Facebook, YouTube, streaming, we can, we can reach the world. Where before, uh, amen, before the pandemic, we had not been reaching them. And so God knows what he's doing. And I give him all the praise and all the glory for what he is about to do. Amen. That puts us right on time. Uh, amen. For where we're going. And uh, I am grateful again. Uh, amen. For those of you, let me tell you also at Grace and Israel, not only are we back in worship every Sunday, live and uninterrupted. Y'all hear me live and uninterrupted, which simply means that we will be in worship. Uh, amen. Exactly when time starts for worship at Grace, which is 845 and 1130 at Israel. And amen. And we're going to we're going to be praising God. We won't be recording it live, but we're going to be having live church. Amen. We're going to stream it and we're showing it in all the other streams you'll be seeing 
or previously recorded. So Sunday service won't be, yeah, amen, we'll be having church, but that won't be the service that you're watching. We want to make sure we organize it, we edit it, make it perfect. We can start it on time and then it makes a, a blessing to those of you who have not yet um, decided to come back to the sanctuary. Or you can watch it later on what happens. But we're looking for you. We're encouraging every member of Israel, every member of Grace. Come on, get ready to come back to church. Amen. Here's what you need to do. Get your vaccination. Get your shots. Amen. Whatever you do, they're making them available. Amen. And fear not. Whatever shot you take, whatever shot you've already taken, amen. The healing is in the name of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the scientists. God gave us them too. He gave us science. God gave us the vaccination, so he knows how to make it work, and he knows how to even heal those to whom they have ill effects. And so I ask you, whatever it is, trust God, do what we need to do. And when you get vaccinated, I was telling the men this last night, we had a good group of men on our big, the Bible instructor gentlemen, uh, in the lessons and uh, we were talking last night. Don't forget, when you get your vaccinations, don't throw away your vaccination cards. That may be more important than you than you expect. Amen. Somebody was talking about laminating it. I like that idea and keeping it on you because you never know when you need to purchase something or go inside somewhere. And they're going to be requiring it, I believe, to fly on airplanes uh, and certain things a little later after vaccinations are given. Uh, and so we don't know what they're going to do next. It's always, we didn't know um, week to week amen last year what would happen from uh, month to month as we were preparing to come in or not come in and so i don't know what's next so we're going to be prepared for everything for everything and so save your vaccination card make sure you keep it in pristine condition uh, so that you may have it if you need it in any occasion uh, of uncertainty uh, and so you make sure you do that and make sure you have hey margo how are you god bless you so much Coach Curry is watching. Mark Hill, God bless you, man of God. Joanne Hill, thank y'all. And I know all of you are ready. Let me tell you, we have other exciting things prepared. Uh, also, on this Sunday, uh, right after the morning worship at Israel, 1130, we have a business meeting at Israel Baptist Church. Every member of Israel, listen up, Israel, every member of Israel Baptist Church, amen. We've been missing you, but thank God. Those of you who feel comfortable enough, you can come on to the church, uh, amen, at 2.30. We started with prayer at 2.30, and then we have our meeting at 3 o'clock. We need to discuss stuff uh, like the floor and some improvements we need to make, uh, some major acquisitions and some things that we need to do that we need the church to be aware of, amen. And for those who cannot come to the church at 2.30 for prayer and 3 o'clock for business meeting, uh, we encourage you to join us on Zoom. On Zoom, we also have a phone number where you can call in and you can be heard yeah, and you can hear us and we can hear you. Uh, amen. And we can see those who are on Zoom. So it's a beautiful thing. Thank God for technology. Uh, you don't even have to be at church to be at church. But we ask you to be with us. Let's be together. Israel Baptist Church. Every member of Israel be there uh, at the business meeting, starting with prayer at 2.30 uh, on the Zoom room and at Israel Baptist Church. Uh, and then the following Sunday, oh, y'all get ready. Y'all get ready. It's Usher Day at Israel, annual Usher Day, annual Usher Day. And our special guest, it'll be at 1230 at Israel. That's the one, one of the few times, the special occasions, we may change our times. Like we're changing, fourth Sunday, we're changing the time uh, and location. The time will be uh, at, uh, the location is going to be at Israel Baptist Church, of course, but the time will be at 1230 on the fourth Sunday. I don't want to get you confused. So if you're there at Sunday school at 1030 and 1130, you're still in good shape because we're going to have our special guest. Our friend, Dr. E. Winford Bell is our special guest speaker for the annual Usher Day at Israel Baptist Church on the fourth Sunday. And then I'm really excited about the first Sunday. The first Sunday also at 1230. It's a special occasion, special service we're going to have on the first Sunday of May at Grace Temple. I thank God. I've been served. God has blessed us to be with Grace now since the passing of my beloved homie. Amen. Our, our, our loving leader, Bishop Michael Marcus Broadus, uh, and serving as overseer and now as pastor. And I'm excited that I'll be celebrating an anniversary. Uh, appreciation. So thank you, Grace, for thinking about us. Uh, matter of fact, I'd like to see everybody by the end, because tomorrow, tomorrow, Saturday morning, Saturday morning, I get my second and my last vaccination. That means I'm going to be ready to hug everybody that want to be hugged. Amen. I'm, I ain't tripping. I'm just thank God that we're getting through this thing and we're coming together. So I encourage and I invite members of Grace Temple and Israel. Amen. On the first Sunday, meet us at, at Grace Temple for Pastor's anniversary, Pastor White Appreciation. 
on the fourth Sunday, be with us at 1230 at Israel Baptist Church by annual Usher's Day. And this Sunday, let's have a great time. 845, every Sunday, 845 at Grace and 1130 uh, at Israel, except for those special occasions. Y'all keep that in mind. If you don't worry about it, we'll have it printed out for you. We want to have consistency so you'll know where we are every week because we are having church in every location, every way, live and uninterrupted. Amen. And then it'll be streamed at the same time from the previous recording every Sunday. So we have in church all kind of ways. And we put in prayer in the air and, and praise in the atmosphere. And we put in the word of God, the word of God in the internet. We're dropping the nets all over the world. We never know. We know already that people have received it, have bidden. Amen. That those have come and said they want to be saved. And we even have candidates for baptism. And so we ask that you, uh, amen, will continue, continue to help us. Uh, to lift up the name of Jesus. Now, these worship services, everywhere we go, we got to be safe. I like that, Michelle. Amen. We got to be safe. We got sanitizers. Uh, we got sanitized sprayers where we're spraying uh, static sprayers. We have also the hand sanitizing stations where uh, the hands we just necessary. Everybody who comes has to wear it, vaccinated or not. Just for everybody, we got to not just by yourself, but help everybody else for the time being. Keep wearing a mask. To our worship service until everyone is vaccinated that needs to be uh amen even if you feel comfortable and you okay amen your mask helps other people feel okay and so we ask that you would please be obedient please be understanding and do that for uh for us as we continue to go up higher in the name of jesus hallelujah Hallelujah. So these are our announcements and so many other things. All right, to the young people, don't forget your chocolate crosses, uh, Sister Anna, and they work real hard and they're working hard. They got things. Uh, the deadline is sometime in May, so you want to get it in before then. That's when you got your chocolate cross. It has a name of a disciple. You need to take a picture with that cross and write a sentence about that particular disciple and send it in so that you can be blessed. Uh, now you're going to be blessed by knowing uh, more about the disciple. You're going to be blessed by participating as you know, you're already a winner because you got a chocolate cross. Nobody else had one. But I tell you, you got to follow through on it because it's a blessing. It's a blessing in it for you. And we want to have this treat. It's a part of our, uh, for our youth ministry evangelism, not only evangelism with youth, but also we want to encourage them to sign up on not, not just you, but everybody. Get ready to sign up for July. July is virtual and vacation Bible school. Amen. We want everybody to be in the word of God, teaching and learning and growing by, by his word. Praise his holy name. So again, uh, thank y'all for being on. I do encourage you because I may not get a chance to share this with you at the end. Uh, but for those of you who are on, thank you so very much for your gifts. Thank you for your love offerings. I thank you for your love. Uh, I thank you for your love and your prayers and for being a part of my life and allowing me to be your shepherd pastor. Uh, and so uh, not only that, but I thank God for all the support that you've given both to Grace and Israel in your tithes and offerings. Uh, we know we've been out of the building. A lot of us haven't been back in yet, but even many, many have not been in the building, but they made sure that the lights were still paid. They made sure that the, the, the work continued to go on. And we want to, in the name of Jesus, on behalf of Grace Temple and Israel, thank you for your giving. Continue to give, continue to sow your seed to meet the gospel need and continue to be a blessing. And not only that in sowing seeds, but we wanna encourage you, everybody, this is world evangelism. Everybody try to win some souls. You know, it's kind of hard for me talking about the church ain't got nobody win, you know, ain't nobody being baptized. How, how many souls, hey, maybe God says this, God says, what have you done lately? What have you done for me? How many souls have you led to Christ lately? And when I say you, it's because I'm pointing at the, the camera and the camera, I can't see y'all, all I see is me. So every now and then it's like a mirror, amen? So I'm looking at my mirror, I'm looking at me. So while you're looking at the screen, you can be pointing at me, but if go look in the mirror, go find somewhere and say, when was the last time you personally won a soul for Jesus Christ and salvation? Uh, amen, evangelize and went out of your way, went out of your way to make sure somebody had, a, had understood Jesus. And it's about not only showing the word of God, but it's also sharing. We got to share it, but then we got to live it in order to show it. Amen. And you can't be negative and always, you know, man. let me tell you, the word of God, amen, comes out of a joyous spirit. And I thank God for those of you who share it. We thank God for those of you who teach it, but everybody who lives it. And we ask that you continue because the word of God will not 
I, it cannot return void. So let's be about the word and about sharing it. And y'all remember, amen, this is World Evangelism Emphasis Week. And you'll be knowing what I'm talking about all throughout the weekend. We got special things assigned. But we want all of us to take a personal assignment because that's what Jesus told us to do. He says, and you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is upon you and you should be my witnesses. Amen. I'm glad to be a witness and I want to continue for all of us. Let me tell you, Grace and Israel, God has a plan for us together. God has a plan for us to touch the world. Amen. And so I want you to remember, amen. Let's do what God says because that's his will. That's his way. Thank you so very much. Uh, amen. So many other things. But if you don't know Jesus Christ after hearing this preacher, uh, this, uh, this this great sermon is you're going to be blessed by, I need you to call in the church. Call Grace. Call Israel. Let them know. I heard Reverend Bailey preach. I heard Reverend Bailey preach, and I want to receive Jesus. <coughs> call in. Tell them you want to be baptized. Schedule a baptism. <coughs> Excuse me. Amen. Schedule a baptism and amen. We will be happy and so excited to take you to the water. God bless you. I pray that after the selection, that the next voice you will hear, uh, amen. The next voice you hear is that of our chief of staff, our friend, our brother, a gospel preacher, and one who loves the Lord, Reverend Gerald Bailey. God bless you, chief, and God bless all of y'all. Y'all enjoy it. And then I'll see you certainly again on Sunday morning for Sunday school at 10, 8, 8.45 at Grace, 11.30 at Israel. And for those of you who are not coming, join us for Sunday school at 10. God bless you. Let's enjoy a selection and a word from this great preacher.
Glory, 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 glory be to the Lord our God. Let me first just give all honor and praise to God Almighty who has been good to us. I can't speak for nobody else's testimony, but despite everything that has been taking place, God has kept me. Despite sickness, despite pain, despite trouble, God's hand of mercy has been upon me. And so I just want to give him praise. I just want to lift him up and glorify his most holy name. And then I just want to take time to just pray a blessing over my spiritual father in the ministry and Pastor Rodney Howard for his love and his care. I don't take for granted when a man of God entrusts someone else to have a hand in part of their ministry because if you study scripture, you understand that he has a great account before the Lord for everything that takes place that the Lord has put him over in ministry. And so, Pastor Howard, thank you. And it's with great privilege that I serve with so many different people in ministry that I would not be able, no man is on an island by himself. And so you got to walk side by side with your brothers and sisters. And especially during this trying time where worship service and Bible study has gone to streaming, uh, I just want you to know that it's a team that has made all this take place. And we couldn't do it if we didn't have one another. So I praise God for each and every one of you, because if it was not for you, I don't know what we would do. And it's because God gifted you and blessed you and you have a heart for the ministry of God. And so we give him praise. I, I pray that you understand I'm talking myself through because every time I get up, I get a little nervous because I know who I have to give an account to. And so um, I'm going to ask at this time if we just bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Lord God, our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you on this Lord's day. A day, Father God, where we have come to worship, dear Lord. I recognize, Father God, that it's a little unusual than normal. But Father God, we can lift up holy hands anywhere. We can praise your name anywhere. We can glorify you anywhere. And so, Father, we lift up hands today and say praise, honor, and glory to you, for there is none like you. Now we just ask and pray in this moment and of this time and of this hour that you would speak, Lord. I pray, Father God, that you would take me and use me let them not see me, but let them see all of you and all of your goodness and all of your greatness and all of your glory. And so thank you, Lord, for great is thy faithfulness. And we bless you, Lord, and we adore you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you don't mind, I pray even at home that you got your Bibles because I don't want you to think that I'm just making up words, that, that you would able to see from the Holy Writ. So if you would turn to the Psalms, turn to the Psalms, turn to the Psalms, the Psalms. Uh, as you know, I'm always going to plug Sunday school.
because Sunday school is where you learn how to navigate your Bible. And so uh, even though we've been doing Sunday school through stream, it's still Sunday school. So if you're having a hard time, I'm going to just tell you, if you put your thumb right in the middle of your Bible and open it up, you're probably going to drop right there in the Psalms. And I'm going to ask that you would turn to the 61st number of Psalms, the 61st number of Psalms, the 61st number of Psalms that was written by David, that was written by David. I pray that you are there because I'm ready to go forward. And it reads like this. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the convert of thy wings. For thou, O God, has heard my vows. Thou has given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou will prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth, which has preserved him. Verse 8 says, So will I sing praise unto thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. May God add a blessing to his holy word. That was the 61st number of Psalms in its entirety. Amen. Uh, last week, my brother in Christ, Al Purnell, did a wonderful, excellent job on last Sunday when we were over worshiping at Grace. The title of his sermon was, Can You Hear Me Now? Can You Hear Me Now? Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to go to the other end of the spectrum. And if you just give me a few moments, I would like to talk. Are you there? Are you there? What do you mean, preacher, are you there? Have you ever been in that situation when you got on your knees and you called on God and you prayed? And you pray, and you pray, but you're not getting no answer. And you pray, and you pray, and it seems that God is just not moving. And you keep praying, and you keep praying, and it just seems like you don't have nowhere else to go because God is not answering. And I don't know about you, but some of the times you ask that question, are you there? Our psalm today is David. What I love about this psalm that is so unique, when David wrote this psalm, this psalm was a personal psalm. This was a psalm that didn't give much background. And I, I'm going to be very frank with you, I'm happy that it didn't give no background. Because a lot of times when we get the background, we go, oh, that's their situation. That's their circumstance. And so, you know, commentators have tried to, to, to coin and try to say what took place. It's believed that David is in his kingship and that he's serving faithfully and diligently in what he's doing. But he's at a point right now that he's being tried, that he's being pushed. And he's gets to this point that he turns around and he writes this psalm. Now, I want you to know what's unique about this psalm is, is that in the psalm, in the subscription, it says to the musician, but then it gives this uh, Hebrew word that means string instruments. But the funny thing is that word is also used in other psalms, but in the other psalms, it talks about many 
different instruments in the plural sense. But here, it's in the singular sense. In other words, this was so personal that David was probably just playing the string instruments all by himself. He was sitting there, and then he began to write this song. And he began to, as he wrote this song, is reflecting on that, Lord, I've been trying to reach you. Lord, I've been trying to connect with you because I've been going through some things. I've been facing some things. And he was just probably reaching out and saying, Lord, are you there? The text says, and it open, opens up and it says, hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. Look here. David says, hear. He says, Lord, don't you hear me? <laughs> it's funny. Last week, we had Brother Al talk about, can you hear me now? David was probably, Lord, can you hear me now? I'm trying to reach out to you because I'm going through some things right now. Here, when it talks about the cry, I want you to know, it's just not no <laughs> cry. He's crying. He is in distress. He is in agony at this point. And he's looking for God to show up. He says, will you attend to my prayer? In other words, when he says that, he says, are you listening to me? Don't you hear me crying to you, Lord? I'm going through this circumstance. I'm going through this situation to the point I'm feeling spiritually bankrupt. I don't know what to do. I don't know where else to turn to. I don't know if you know anything about bankruptcy, but when you go into bankruptcy, that means, guess what? You're pretty much starting to be left with nothing. David said, I have nothing left, Lord, but I'm looking to you to just hear my cry. Hear my cry. Verse 2, he says, from the end of the earth, I will cry unto thee. It's amazing. But here's David. He just poured out his heart. He says, look, I need you now. So much for, so I'm to the end of everything that I could do. When he's talking about the end of the earth, in other words, I didn't use every measure, everything that I could do to get to the point. I was trying to get some restoration back. I was trying to build myself back up. I was looking for some things, but guess what? I couldn't find nothing. And so I'm at my very end. I'm to the point, Lord, I feel that I'm about to break. I'm to the point that at any second, I probably could lose my mind. At any point, I could go cray cray all over the place because I don't know what else to do but I'm looking to you oh Lord I, I, I don't know if, if, if you remember uh, there's a song and, and I, I just want to share the words from the song because when, when I start sharing the words you're going to know what I'm talking about my man said not a second or another minute not an hour or another day. But at this moment, with my arms outstretched, I need you to make a way. He goes on to says, as you have done so many times before, the window or open door, I stretch my hands to thee. Come and rescue me. I need you right away. I need you now. I need you now. Oh, Lord, I need you now. Wait a minute. He didn't stop there. He turned around and said, not another minute, not another second, not another hour, another day. Oh, <laughs> but Lord, I need you right away. If I never needed you before to show up and restore all of the faith that I let slip while I was yet searching the world for more. The truest friend I have indeed. You're my best friend I know and need. I stretch out my hands to thee. Come and rescue me. Why? Because I need you now. I need you now. I need you right now. David was at the point. Smokey, you wasn't the first one that sung that. David penned it and says, oh, Lord, I'm in need right now. Matter of fact, I'm at the ends of the earth trying to find out how can I get through this thing. David goes on. He says, for the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Has your heart ever been overwhelmed? Did it seem like it was just too much? 
Have you been in a position when you go, I don't know if I can take this anymore? Get to the point that not only do you not want to take it no more, you find it to the point that, you know, I really don't want to be around nobody else. I really want to just get by myself because if I talk to somebody else, they may tell me something that I really don't want to hear. They may say something to me that seems very stupid because they really don't understand my circumstance. They really don't understand my situation. And then they're looking at me like something's wrong with me. And something is wrong with me, but something's wrong with you because you don't understand what I'm going through. He says, my heart is overwhelmed. David is at his wit's end. And he says, I'm pleading to you, Lord, because I have gone as far as I can go, even to the end of the earth. But I need you now because my heart is being bombarded and I have no solution. It looks like no way out. I've given my all and I'm at the point then I'm just spiritually gone. I'm just spiritually gone. But one thing that I love is that when you begin to have a relationship with the Lord, when you really depend on him, when you trust him, you begin to turn and you begin to reflect on him. See, let me just say, I've already covered the first point. Whatever you do, don't stop petitioning God. What David did, he saw God's face. He looked to God, even though he wasn't hearing from God. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. It says, man ought to always pray and faint not. In other words, our prayer life should stay consistent even when you're not hearing from God. Here was the difference, though. David probably started out, hey, Lord, I'm just going through a few things here. God didn't answer. Hey, Lord, I'm going through a few things, and now he gets more specific. Hey, Lord, now I'm not only being specific, but I'm recognizing that I ain't hearing nothing. Do you see? SOS, SOS, I'm in need. Will you come get me? Will you come pick me up? And still not hearing nothing. To the point, the scripture says that he cried out unto the Lord. He was looking for God. He was saying, Lord, come get me. Come rescue me. I need you now. I need you right now. But watch this. To be says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Y'all didn't hear me. David is in despair. David is spiritually bankrupt. But David turns around and says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. In other words, what he's saying is, look, I got to hold on to the provisions of God. That's my second point. You got to hold on to the provisions of God. What do you mean, preacher? Sometimes when you're going through, there's times that you can hold on to some stuff, but the stuff that you're holding on is at your level. He says, I need a rock that is higher than I. Think about it. I want you to see this now. If a wave was coming and you were on the sea, and you were holding on to a rock at wave level, all it takes is for the wave to rise a little bit, and the wave would overcome you. The wave would consume you. The wave could get to the point it would drown you. But I want you to know that when you get a rock that is higher than you, it takes you to the highest mountain. It gets you in a point where water cannot reach. It gets you to the point that nothing can drown you. If you're at a point that now you are secure, you think about it. We got all these big mountains across the world. And guess what? Every time when people go go climb them, what do they try to get to? The high point. He didn't get it. David said, Lord, I need you to take me to the high point. Don't leave me at the bottom of the rock. Take me to the highest point of the rock. I need to be higher than I. Guess why? Because I've been consumed enough already, and I need to learn how to depend on you, Lord. Because if I depend on you, I know you make a way for me. He says, hold on to my provision. Let me help you out. First Peter chapter 2, 3 and 6 says, if so be 
ye have tasted the Lord is gracious. Can I just, oh, I got to stop right there. Did you hear what he said? He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. That's what Peter said. But what, guess what? David turned around in Psalm 34, 8 says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. In other words, if you have tasted God before, if you know who he really is, you know that God is faithful at promise, that God felleth not, that God keeps his word, that God is consistent, that God will do what he says that he does, and that he would not go back on his word because his word does not come back to him void. Everything his word goes forth, accomplish everything that he has purpose in it. But guess what? Sometimes God doesn't have to move because you want him to move. Sometimes God allows you to go through some things so that he can build you up. Sometimes he allows you to go through some things so that you can be strengthened. Sometimes he allows you to go through some things so you can gain some wisdom so that when you're going through things, and watch this, some things that you go through is not always for you. Sometimes God is using you because he can trust you to get his word through. He's sitting here, but I'm reminded. In verse 4 it says, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of man, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also are living stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. In other words, Peter says, look, don't lose your mind just because it's getting out of hand, because if you got the solid rock, you can endure anything. I remember there's a song that says, my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust in the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is seeking stand. He said, take me higher than I, because I got a rock that can keep me. I got a rock that can sustain me. I got a rock that'll cover me. David is now pouring out. Here's the thing. Did you catch it? David, in the beginning, was lamenting, and he sends his petition. Now David is holding on to God's provision because he knows that God is a provider. So he turns to God, and he says, look, Lord, I need your help. I need you to give me a rock that is higher than I. Watch this. Verse 3 says, for thou hast been a shelter to me and a strong tower from my enemy. Did you see that? He says, first of all, I need a rock, but I ain't forgot what you did for me. No, y'all didn't get that. Watch what he said. He says, you have been a shelter and you have been a strong tower. A shelter is a place that you go so that you can get away from the things that can hurt you, destroy you, take you down, uh, burn you out. He says, but not only do I got a place that I can go to a shelter, he says, I, I have a strong tower. Now watch this. With a strong tower, what would happen is, is when you had your fortress, on the walls of the fortress, there was a tower that was up there. And it sat very high. And it sat high so that it could see anything that was coming from afar, especially if it was your enemy. He says, God is my strong tower. He sees the things before they can come and consume me. He sees the things before they can wear me out. Not only that, a high tower was a place of safety. Because guess what? That meant I knew the enemy enemy was coming, and I could destroy the enemy before the enemy could get, get to me. Don't you see it? God is saying, David is saying to God, that look, I have not forgot that you have been my strong tower. Don't y'all remember when David was being chased by Saul, and he had to go before those, that was, the, was his enemies, and it said that the Bible said that David went crazy, but here was the thing. David may have acted a little crazy, but God was a strong tower. He allowed David to get out of his circumstance in his situation that he would not be consumed by his enemy. He says, look, Lord, I have for not forgotten how you have provided for me. You are my shelter. You are my strong tower. Watch this. He says, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the co covert 
of thy wings. Watch this. David says, look, I find peace when I know that I can get to the tabernacle. The tabernacle was a place of praise. The tabernacle was a place of worship. It was the place that you went so that you could get before the face of God. He says, look, I know that you can give me a rock that is higher than I. I know that you can provide shelter. I know that you can be a strong tower. But guess what? I'm resolved in my heart because I will worship you at the tabernacle. I'll bless your name. When they're coming against me, I'll bless your name. When I'm feeling down, I'll bless your name. See, sometimes you got to learn how to encourage yourself. Watch this. David with his men. We're going to go fight against Israel. They were going to fight with another king. That king said, no, David, you and your man cannot fight with me. David and them came back home. When they came back home, guess what? His family and all their stuff had been taken away by somebody else. All the men were getting mad at David. What did David, the scripture said what David did, he had to encourage himself. I'm trying to help us out here today. I'm helping myself. If it ain't helping you, it's helping me. Sometimes you got to learn how to encourage yourself when nobody else understands, whenever nobody else knows what's going on. Sometimes you got to stop and say, I will encourage myself. David said, I will abide in the tabernacle forever. In other words, Lord, I'll never get so far out that I forget about who you are. I'll never get so far out that I stop worshiping you. I'll never get so far out that I stop praising you. Under every circumstance, under every situation, I will abide in the tabernacle forever. He says, I will trust in the covert of thy wings. That word covert means secret or hiding place. God will give you a hiding place. God will give you a place of peace. God will give you a place of serenity. God will give you a place of joy. God will give you a place of comfort. Guess what? Everything around you can be in chaos. And you can be in the midst of chaos. But when you dwell under his wings, when you dwell under his hiding place, it doesn't matter what's going around. I want you to know, everything, president acting crazy, disease is rampant everywhere, folks is losing jobs, people are passing away left and right. But I want you to know, I'm I'm covered under the shadows of the Almighty God. He has me in a place that it doesn't matter what others may do. He brings me peace. He brings me comfort. He makes me joy. It does not matter because he has me. David said, the Lord will provide. Psalms 27. Four and five says, one thing I ask from the Lord, and this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord, to seek him in his holy temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me self safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and sit and set me high upon a rock. The psalmist is saying that, guess what? When I got God on my side, I don't have to worry about nothing else. I, I, I know sometimes it looks like we may be in defeat. It looks like we may lose, but I'm sorry. I don't know if you read your Bible, but I sure enough read mine. It says, in the end, we win. Woo. Some of the problems that we have when we start going through we take a defeated attitude, and it's not over yet. I'm reminded that, uh, that it, it says that it's not over until God says so. Woo! We'll start counting folks out. We'll start saying what won't happen. We'll start sitting up pointing fingers and everything else. Did you look to God? Did you turn to him? Did you believe in him? Did you trust him? 
He said, if I be for you, who can be against you? All you got to do is believe in me. Do you believe him? David was at the point that, like I said, he was here giving petitions. Now he's giving, looking back over the, provi the provisions that God has made, and he's really starting to encourage himself. And I'm almost done now. I, I, I want you to know we're about to go home soon, Pastor. We're about to go home a little earlier than normal. But I want you to know that God is good. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 5 says, For thou, O God, has heard my vows. Thou has given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. My last point, proclaim the faithfulness of God. Proclaim the faithfulness of God. We're going to walk through these last scriptures and then we're going to go home. Proclaim the faithfulness of God. Did, 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 did you see that? Did you see what he just said? He says, for you, O oh God. I know it said thou, but he's talking about, he says you. He says you, O oh God has heard my vows. In other words, David says, you were there when I pleaded that I would serve you. You were there when I said that no matter what, I would put my trust in you. You were there when I said that no matter what takes place, I would follow you wherever you told me to go. I would do it the way that you told me to do it. In other words, David had made a commitment unto the Lord. Let me tell you, a problem that many people have is that they don't really make a true, genuine commitment. A commitment is, goes beyond just lip service. A commitment is a heart service. It has to be deep in your heart. Don't you know when you come and you come give your life to Christ, it says, Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, but believe in your heart. You got to confess and you got to believe in your heart. It can't just be your lips. It's got to be deep inside because guess what? Trouble is going to come. Things are going to come that's going to push you. Things are going to come that's going to knock you down. But you got to be able to know that you made a vow unto the Lord, that no matter what may come your way, that I will stand firm knowing that God is able. Watch. He says, for thou, O God, has heard my vows. Thou has given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. And I want you to know, this, this is key right here. This is key right here. Because guess what? You can't do nothing if it ain't in the name of God. It is by his name. Healed because of his name. Do you know him? Jehovah Rapha. Peace because of his name. Do you know him? Jehovah Shalom. I want you to know it's by his name. It's not by my might. It's not by my power. It's not by my strength. I don't have enough to give. If I had enough to give, then I could have did it myself. But my God who is able, was able to do everything on my behalf, not because I was so good, not because I was so great, but for his name's sake. You got to understand, it's at the name of the Lord that you got to pin your position. It's at the name of the Lord that you got to pin what you're going to do, how you're going to stand, how you're going to act, how you're going to react. Stand on Christ. Don't stand on anything else. Not only that David proclaimed, O oh Lord, you said that I am yours. You made me part of those who have vowed their de dedication to you and fear and reference your name. Those who truly fear his name are in covenant with God, which allows to have access to his benefits because we are his. Did you see that? In verse 6, it says, I mean, verse 5 says, Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. There's a blessing when you hold on to the name of God. There's a blessing when you trust him. Because guess what? God said, I will do some things. I will make sure that these things come to pass. I'll make sure that you'll be taken care of. I'll make sure that you got a covering. I'll make make sure that your path, when it's crooked, that it can be made straight. I make sure that when you brought down, I can bring you up high. I can do all these things, but you got to do it in my name, not your name, in my name. You got to believe the promises that I made to you. Verse 6 says, thou will prolong the king's life 
and his years are many generations. Seven says, he shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. I want you to see this. I don't know if y'all caught this. Here's David. If you look at the first five verses, he was sitting up and he was talking in the first person. If you look here at verses six and seven, he's now talking in the third person. Can I give you an, a, what it looks like when this is taking place? David was standing here and he was calling on God, talking about the troubles and the trials and all the things that he was going through. He was talking to God saying, I'm almost at my breaking point and I don't have nowhere else to turn to. All of a sudden, as David began to encourage himself and remember of the provisions of God and all the things that God does for him, all of a sudden, he stopped talking in the first person. David said, first person, you stay there. Let the third person stand to the side. And he says, don't you see? I see you right there. Look right there. He said, thou will prolong the king's life. He says, I know, Lord, that you'll be the one that'll keep me. You'll be the one that's the same me. I know that there's those that want to take my seat. There are those that want to take my position. There are those that want my title. But, Lord, as long as you have me there, as long as part of your purpose, my kingship will prolong as long as you want it to go. I'm trying to help somebody because sometimes we get so worried about what other people are going to do, how up other people are going to act, what they can take away from us. Let me tell you, if God gave it to you, then nobody can take it from you. Only the Lord can take it from you. David said from the third person, and what he was doing, he was doing a little encouraging him himself. He said, look here, first person, it's okay now, because God has always had you. He gave you a position. He gave you a place. He gave you authority, because he knew that you would trust him. Watch this. He goes on, and he says, in his years, as many generations. David was reminded that God told him that, look, in your lineage, that it won't just be you as king. It won't just be your sons, but down the line, there's a king, a king of kings, a lord of lords that will live forever, that will live for eternity. Guess what, David? Your name will be tied to it. You need to understand that when God blesses you, God will keep your name tied to it no matter what takes place through time past, through time storms, through time trouble. God will keep you and sustain you through everything. And watch, it's all with your name on it. Watch, not because your name was so great, but because that God said, this is for you. Watch this. He says, he shall abide before God forever. He says, look here. You are in a place, David. Remind myself that God says that, guess what? Because I vowed to him and I made a commitment that, that God says that I have eternal life. I have something that nobody can take away from me. Don't you remember the scripture says that when you're in God's hand that no man can pluck you out? I don't care what man try to do to you. I, guess what? I'm reminded the, Bi the, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Oh, I don't care if weapons, I don't care if swords, I don't care what things that may come your way. When you on God's side, it doesn't matter what they do. Sometimes we act so fearful about what's going to take place. Do you trust God enough? God is more than enough if we just trust him. Watch this. <sighs> David says, oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. David says, look here, David, don't lose sight. Don't you remember when you wrote the 23rd number of Psalms? Don't you remember? You said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David had to remind himself. He had to remind himself that God was faithful. Not only did he need to remind himself, he had to proclaim how good God was because he knew if God kept him, if God sustained him, if God watched over him, then there would be nothing to worry about. He recognized that, guess what? I did a little murmuring and complaining. I felt like I didn't have nowhere else to go. I felt that I was all by myself. I felt that, that I was broken down. But then as I began, 
to rem remember of what the Lord God had did for me, when I remember the provisions that he had made for me, when I remember the promises that he had put before me, that I have no trouble for real. See, sometimes we think that in this Christian life that everything is supposed to be honky-dory. Everything is not supposed to be honky-dory. All we're supposed to do is trust God and believe and know God because I want you to know there's a place that there's a time that we will get to, that there'll be no more heartache, there'll be no more pain, there'll be no more trouble, there'll be no more sickness, there'll be no more tears. It'll be a place that we will be able to rejoice. Watch this. David says it in verse 8. He says, so I will praise unto thy name forever that I may daily perform my vow. In other words, David says, Lord, I will glorify you, I will lift you up, and I will give you praise. Because guess what? I know that I'm going through here. I know that I got to go through some hard times. I know that I got to go through some troubles. I know that I got to go through some trials. But when I trust you, when I believe you, when I put everything to you, I know that I'm going to make it. How do I know that I can make it? Because I made a vow to you. I remember that when I vowed to you, you told me all the promises that would be before me. You told me the goodness that would take place. You told me the things of everlasting, the everlasting. And when I put my trust and my hope in you, dear Lord, I have nothing to worry about. Why? Because I know that you fell if not. I know that when you say something, it shall go forth, that you keep me and sustain me. How do I know that? Because you told me. David said, I remember that you told me that that king that would sit, that that king would live forever. Who's that king? That king is Christ. Christ, the solid rock. Christ, who went to Calvary. Christ, who went on the cross. Christ, that died for me. Christ, that was in a borrowed tomb. Christ, that lived there for three days. Christ, on the third day, rose up with all power and might in his head. Christ, who now sits on the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. Christ, that's coming back again. In other words, David started to praise God, begin to proclaim God, begin to lift up God, because he recognized what God was doing. He recognized that, guess what? That even though I don't hear you right now, dear Lord, even though I didn't understand everything, but when, when I remind reminded myself. I knew that you had not left me. When I reminded myself, I remembered that you said what you would do. Oh, I want you to know that God has made a promise to you. And if you accept that promise, if you keep your vow, if you live by his word, if you do what he called you to do, God has promised he would take care of you. Yeah. David said, Lord, it's not, are you there? You've always been there. I just couldn't see you because I let my natural self get blinded by what I thought what I really needed, but you knew what's, what's best for me. Here's the thing about your prayer life, because that's what this is. This is a prayer. David said, and he teaches us that, look, that in life, there's going to be some time that you may not hear nothing. But that does not mean that God is not moving nothing. God is always moving things on your behalf if you just put your hope and your trust in him. I asked you in the beginning, are you there? God has always been there if you trust him. Amen. Praise his holy name. Come on, let's give God some praise for the chief, Evan Gerald Bailey. What a powerful word. Thank you, man of God, for allowing the Lord to use you. And he shared with you the unadulterated, adulterated word of God, the power, the sound doctrine, the basic Bible truth. Amen. You got to know Jesus. You got to know God. No matter how it gets in your life, no matter how bad. He is, Lord, a rock, my strong, my high tower, amen, my fortress. He wants to take care of you, but you got to put yourself in the right place, oh, to be kept by Jesus. And so as we come, if there might be somebody who heard, who heard this great preacher preach, 
you heard a word of God that may have encouraged you, and you say, I want to become saved. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to walk with him. I want to be a part of the Christian church. All you got to do, all you got to do is say in your heart, Lord, I know I'm a sinner, and I want to be saved. Come into my life and save my soul in Jesus' name. And I'm here to tell you that if you do that, God says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So call Israel, call Grace. Let us know that you believe Jesus. You prayed with Pastor Howard. You asked Jesus to come into your heart, and you are saved. But you want a church that you can grow in. You can be baptized. You can learn. We encourage you. We invite you. Thank you.